viral diseases in developing countries by Bill and Trader Betty and Sophia Trader Betty. We both attend Barrington High School, and this is recorded July 1st, 2023. My name is Sophia Trader Betty. I'm an incoming 11th grader at Barrington High School in Barrington, Illinois. I love golf, and I'm on the varsity golf team. I'm a co-founder of Citizen for Humanity. It is a nonprofit my brother and I founded last year. Our mission is to promote health equity through service and education by addressing social determinants of health for marginalized individuals and communities. I love medicine, and I've been a part of HOSA all, uh, my freshman and sophomore year. And next year, I'm going to be the vice president. Freshman and sophomore year, I was student council representative, and I plan on pursuing a career in infectious disease medicine with a global health specialization. Hi, my name is Don Charvetti. I'm an incoming 11th grader at Barrington High School in Barrington, Illinois. I'm an avid golfer. I'm on the Barrington's varsity golf team. I have a deep interest in medicine and math. I'm a HOSA and FHP member, the captain of the math team and school basketball team, the co-founder of Systems for Manny, and my goal is to become a radiation oncologist when I'm older. Introduction and background. Access to safe water, sanitation, and hygiene is the most basic need to live a healthy life, and it is a human right. 1.6 billion people lack access to safe drinking water, and 2.8 billion people lack access to sanitation, and 1.9 billion people will lack basic hand hygiene facilities by 2030. Diarrheal diseases are the second leading cause of death of children under the age of five. Severe dehydration and fluid loss are the main causes of death. Most illnesses are from water contaminated with human feces, sewage, or animal feces. Diarrheal illnesses are infections in the intestinal tract that are caused by viruses, bacteria, and parasitic organisms. Climate change has caused droughts and floods that have destroyed or contaminated local water sources. To better understand these diarrheal diseases, we must learn about global burden of disease for diarrheal diseases. So exactly what is the global burden of disease? Here's a study objectives. It was initiated in 1992 by the World Bank and the World Health Organization. Its purpose is to address three goals, provide information on non-fatal outcomes for debates on international health policy, Goal two, develop unbiased epidemiological assessments for major disorders. And goal three, quantify the burden of disease for a cost-effective analysis. The global burden of disease is measured in dailies, disability adjusted life in years. One daily is a health gap measured equaling one year of a healthy life lost. Five leading causes of dailies worldwide in the year 2000 were low respiratory infections, HIV AIDS, diarrheal diseases, malaria, and tuberculosis. Here are some metrics from the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation, data on diarrheal diseases. Figure 2 shows the highest risk factor for diarrheal diseases is unsafe water sources. Figure 3 shows that the global burden of diseases of diarrheal illnesses is highest in sub-Saharan Africa. Figure 4 shows that the population is most affected are children under the age of 5. Consequences of diarrheal illnesses. Consequences include malnutrition, improper nutrient absorption leads to decreased absorption of vitamins and minerals. Malnutrition weakens the immune system, making children more susceptible to diarrheal diseases. This can also impair growth and development. Diarrheal illnesses causes dehydration. Severe dehydration in children can be life-threatening. Limited resource settings, limited access to oral hydration solutions, or medical care can increase risk associated with dehydration. School absenteeism. Missing out on school due to frequent diarrhea or illnesses can have long-term socioeconomic consequences. Finally, economic burden on family and communities. Costs associated with medical treatment, transportation to healthcare facilities, and lost productivity due to illness and caretaking responsibilities can further impoverish already vulnerable communities. Prevention and treatment of diarrheal illnesses. One way to prevent and treat diarrheal illnesses is to provide access to clean water, improve sanitation, and, and improve sanitation facilities. Another way is promoting hygiene practices such as proper hand washing with soap and reinforcing personal and food hygiene. Another way is enhancing healthcare systems to manage and treat cases effectively by increasing availability of oral salt solutions for rehydration and zinc supplements. Lastly, developing long-term programs or initiatives in the prevention of diarrheal illnesses, such as educating on breastfeeding, health education on how infections spread, and immunizations. With long-term goals should align with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. SDG 6 is assure access to water and sanitation for all 
is a goal that outlines what we should achieve by 2030. Detailed information for SG, SDG 6 is listed below. Our nonprofit, Citizens for Humanity, implemented water and hygiene projects in Tanzania. With the help of our partners, we identified high-risk communities in rural Tanzania. In the remote village of Mtuwambu, there were Maasai families with little children, and their closest water well was 20 kilometers away. It was a commercial well, but it was contaminated by contaminated water. The children were malnourished and often sick because of the urea caused by it. To prevent waterborne illnesses, we taught them proper hand washing and hygiene education, and we distributed ceramic filtration drugs, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Ceramic water filtration systems. We needed a solution that was simple and sustainable. We used a local manufacturer, Safe Water East Africa, that has created clay water filters that are portable and last up to five years and kill 99.9% of parasites and microbes and can provide up to 36 liters of clean filtered water per day. The filters are made of, up of a mix of sawdust, clay, colloidal silver. The silver ions cause the pair strands of DNA and bacteria to separate, weakening microbial organisms and causing them to die. The ceramic jugs were simple and a very low learning curve and had no maintenance. We have been following up with these families and we're happy to learn that the malnourished babies in these photos were are healthy and gaining weight. It is so rewarding to hear the outcomes of our water and hygiene projects and how they help these families. We hope to make it back to Tanzania soon and help more people. The idea that some lives matter less is the root of all that is wrong with the world. This is a quote written by Dr. Paul Farmer. His work in Africa is the reason why we are interested in global health and created this water and hygiene project. Everyone has the right to help. Acknowledgements. Special thanks to John Hopkins Global Health Leaders Conference for selecting us to present and raise awareness for prevalent global health issues. Special thanks to Zimbabwe Safaris. Without your help, we would not be able to do our missions in Africa. Special thanks to my parents for always supporting us with their passions. Special thanks to our grandparents for encouraging us and always believing in us. Special thanks to Citizens for Humanity volunteers who have stood with us and are as stood with us as we address health inequities and make our world a better place. To follow our work, you should use you should use the link below. It is for our website. And if you want to contact us and ask us about our new our next projects, use the email listed below. Thank you so much. Here are our references. Thank you so much. Hmm.